joining us here today. We're at the exhibition room in Long Beach, California, where everything in Long Beach is about art, craft, music, creating, and awesome drinks. So today we have a very special guest with us. His name is Ralph Perota, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about a delicious whiskey. But let's bring him up here first. And there he is, Mr. Ralph Perota. Well, thank you so much, man. So yeah, good to have you. Really. Um, Ralph, before we get into the deliciousness, let's start a little grease for the wheels. How's that sound? Absolutely, please. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? How you got it? That one's mine. Oh, excuse me. Whatever. <laughs> Would you like my seat yours? No, no, thank okay. you. Okay. So, could you tell us a little bit about? Yeah, cheers. Absolutely. How you got into the business yes, yes. and all that good stuff, and let yeah. everyone know why. Cheers. So, uh, as Warren said, my name is Ralph Perota. I work for uh, Pacific Wine and Spirits, which is a division of Southern Wine and Spirits. Um, I uh, represent a lot of great brands uh, that Diageo uh, sells, uh, one of them being George Dickel. Uh, we also do Kettle, Bullet, uh, a lot of great brands on the market. Uh, so I've been in the industry for about five years now, and I came from the restaurant business, uh, where I fell in love with bartending, uh, you know, going from serving one day a week to... Professional drinking. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Working one day a week as a server, going all the way to a five-day-a-week uh, five a week bartending shift uh, into management. So I started figuring out that I needed a big boy job, so I decided to uh, go corporate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so now, uh, brings me here today to tell you a little bit about this phenomenal whiskey, uh, George Dickel. So George Dickel whi uh, whiskey uh, himself uh, was, uh, came from Germany as an immigrant. Uh, in about 1807, uh, him and his wife Augusta found land in Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> Augusta. <laughs> Good German name. Like Augusta. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, uh, once they opened up uh, their distillery, they started making whiskey immediately. Uh, George Dickel himself felt that uh, his whiskey was going to be uh, to the highest standards of the best scotch that he drank in Germany. Uh, so therefore, he decided to spell his whiskey without the E. Uh, which is kind of a cute little note. A lot of people, you know, American whiskeys, other whiskeys, they use the E in the actual whiskey name. Uh, what's great and a little unique about the way he does it, and it's actually still known today that it's the only uh, whiskey that's done this way in Tennessee, is they go through a uh, charcoal chilled mellowing uh, fermentation or... Um, filtration. Filtration, excuse yeah. me. No worries. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm good with that words. <laughs> Uh, they actually take their uh, maple trees that they grow on, on site, uh, bring it, uh, uh, excuse me, burn them down to getting the actual char charcoal itself, and that's what they use is a maple charcoal uh, to uh, filtration or filter their uh, their whiskey. What temperature they lower to? Uh, I do believe it's about 86. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very it gets down pretty cold. The reasoning why George Dickel is doing this to this day. Uh, is because uh, George Dickel himself found that uh, whiskey made in colder temperatures just came out tasting better. He made them in summer, he also made them in winter. And he found that winter was the best tasting whiskey that he, uh, that, uh, that he developed. So to this day, uh, they actually go through a fermentation, or excuse me, a, a filtration system that's cold filtering. So, uh, nice. what's beautiful about their uh, their line for the rye is it's 95% rye and 5% barley. So that spiciness that you get from a uh, from a rye whiskey is just beautiful. Uh, it's very versatile when it comes down to making drinks. Um, it's really good by itself too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, they also do uh, four months of uh, barrel aging in uh, American oak barrels. Uh, I do believe it's a three char, so uh, you get some good caramel notes, some vanilla, um, as we can see. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so now we're going to actually take a, a little quick break and set up, and uh, Ralph's going to make us a delicious cocktail that we'll have him explain after we get set up for it. Thank you guys so much. Be right back. Awesome. Now we got a special treat. Ralph's gonna make a delicious drink that's called the Cablegram. Ralph, take it away, my friend. All right, uh, the Cablegram, just a real quick little history note on it. Uh, the Cablegram was established in uh, San Francisco. Uh, I don't actually remember the bartender's name, but uh, that's irrelevant right now. Because um, <laughs> we're gonna drink it. <laughs> yeah. What's great, you know, the Cablegram, the name actually comes from, uh, you know, t Telegram. Uh, cablegram was just another form of communication. I think the name, how it became, uh, 
apparent is just because it made it from San Francisco all the way to New York and it's still a beautiful, uh, clean, and refreshing cocktail to this day. So I'm gonna start building it for you right now. You're gonna take a highball glass, fill it with ice, get one more cube in there. We're gonna go with, obviously, our dickel rye. We wanna go two ounces of the dickel rye. Mmm, that's what I call a drink. From there, we're gonna take a uh, house-made ginger syrup. If you choose not to use a house-made ginger syrup, you can use ginger beer. Uh, Fever Tree is a beautiful brand that's on the market. Uh, if you choose not to use a ginger syrup, but I recommend making it because it just comes out a lot uh, fresher. So we're gonna go with a quarter ounce of ginger syrup. Then we go with a quarter ounce of some lime juice. And then we finish it off with some Club soda. And I don't have a lime, but. Spoon. Yeah. No, we actually don't mix. We just build, grab a straw. Over there. We're finding it. There it is. Bam. Garnish with a lime wheel. That's your cablegram. Nice. Well, let's see how the cablegram tastes. <laughs> mm. From the expert. Delicious. Delicious one here, I want to try it. Okay, well, I'll drink it all. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come back again, and Ralph is going to make us another delicious cocktail. Awesome! So right now we're going to try a delicious drink that Ralph has modified from someone else's recipe, and because it's so different than the original, we were wrestling about a new name, and I think we came up with a good one. What do you think, Ralphie? I think it's pretty good. <laughs> do you get pissed when I call you Ralphie? I think not so, at all. I think it's hilarious. I will not shoot my <laughs> eye out. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> so, like, what's the new name? Uh, we're gonna go with uh, Coco George. Nice. So the the original cocktail uh, actually comes from one of their in-house uh, bartenders at the distillery. Uh, it's known as the classy mother that's uh, as an eau de vie or, a, or an, um, an homage to uh, Augusta. But uh, we're going to do a little bit of a twist on it. So uh, the way we're going to build this drink is uh, we're going to do a stir and a strain into a coupe. Uh, the coupe glass here, very similar to uh, a roundish martini glass, if you will. Uh, so we're going to take some ice to uh, start building. Too, actually. What? Oh, you're absolutely right. Well, oh, no, you know, it gets tricky. When you're on camera, people always forget how crazy it is when you have all these people looking at you. I'm used to it because I'm so handsome. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, right? Just a little bit. Kind of. Kind of. So from there, we're going to take again our uh, beautiful Dickel Rye Whiskey. We're going to go two ounce. Didn't want to spill that time. Nice. <laughs> Nailed it. There you go. You like Nothing that? but net. Uh, from there, we're going to take a dry curacao from uh, uh, Perrier Fernand. Uh, this is that Pierre Fernand. Pierre Fernand. Pierre Fernand. <laughs> uh, this is a dry curacao with a cognac base. Uh, what's beautiful about this brand is that it has sweetness, but yet it does uh, have bring some dryness and uh, different elements to the uh, to the drink itself. So we're definitely going to be taking a three quarter ounce of this one. And I know we're not talking about this curacao, but man, that's a delicious curacao. Yes, if you can get and so you have like this delicious, wonderfully complex rye, and you have this dry curacao. It's like lovely bitter orange that's rounded out by sugar and a little chocolate note. In the background. I see. I know, right? I see. Nicely played. Uh, from there, we're going to take a little bit of a dry sherry, uh, which brings another uh, beautiful element and back note to the cocktail itself. Uh, so we're only going to go with a quarter ounce of that. From there, we're going to want to give ourselves a uh, couple shakes of orange bitters. Mm, orange. Two. And then from there, some chocolate bitters, which brings our cocoa element to Coco George. And now we're going to watch them stir. Shake, stir like you mean it. Oh. 
You have to, like you have to have some love in it. You want to make sure it's perfectly chilled. You want to make yeah. sure it's adequately diluted. You want to make sure it's completely integrated. But you also want to have a little fun too, because that of don't course. hurt. Of course. From there, take your julep strainer. Mmm. Purdy. See, it's got that beautiful orange color that we're looking for. Garnish. This is the fun part. So we're going to want to take a uh, peeler, peel off a orange rind. Before we uh, do the final touch, you want to give it a little bit of the oil, rub it around the glass, take one of these maraschino cherries, and if you haven't ever had a true maraschino cherry, you're missing out. But if you haven't, you're missing out. You are missing out. Yeah. There you go. The Coco Dickle. Or Coco George. Coco George. I'm gonna see what Coco George tastes like. Unless someone else wants to. Anybody? So, Ralph, fantastic, dude. You did a fantastic job. Thank you very much, like, Forrest. Great delicious share. whiskey. Oh, yeah. Obviously, we hated it <laughs> because uh, the few of us that are here drank that much, but we're still standing. That's how we are at the exhibition room. We're here to show love, enjoy great cocktails, be responsible, have a good time and meet new people. So thank you so much for coming. You guys have a fantastic week and make sure you tune in again next time. Woo!